Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Fear 3 Game Thoughts So, I got the Point Man ending, because in order to complete this game, I had to play it as Point Man anyway. If I wanted to see the Fettle ending, I would have to play every level as Fettle, and life's too short. So, yeah. I was surprised to find, and disappointed, that I didn't actually fight Fettle there at the end. You know, I guess just the you know, the massive version of the creature that turns out to be Harlan Wade because he was the real monster, you know, the dentist's favorite patient one with the massive mouth. You know, personally, if my weak spot was right in there in my mouth, I'd actually try to close, or I guess it's throat, you know, yeah, I'd actually try to close the... but anyway, so yeah, you know, he's about to kill Alma, and, you know, she's like, I don't care that you killed Fettle, that's, that's fine, but could you take care of my other baby here? And she disappears, I guess, dead? Because all she really wanted was to have a child that Armacam didn't take away, I guess? Okay, but that's a little bit of a letdown compared to that. And I guess that is what they've essentially been building up to because that's, you know, in the other games they were like, you know, oh, she wants another child because they took, you know, the other one away and of the other ones. And, you know, we don't get to see the child itself, even though everyone else is getting a face in this, you know. Point Man, even Olma, I did not really want to see Olma's face, but I, yeah. I guess if they were going to kill her off, they might as well show her face. You know, it doesn't lend that much more disappoint to the already pile of disappoint. Now... Yes, so, you know, and, and Point Man goes off into the door of the light, presumably because he's by now used to that's how that final level is going to show you where to go. That final level was just ridiculous, you know, I was just trying out different... The entire game actually felt like just trying out trial and error, you know, wh which way am I going? Well, this way is blind, this door... You know, there were just three different paths everywhere I went, and just eventually I found the right one, you know. Anyway, so yes, he walks off, and it's ironic to hear, you know, Jin talk about how, ooh, you saved everyone, and this is much better, because she doesn't realize that he actually, you know... It also actually, it gets awkward in this one with how Point Man never speaks. You know, and when, when he was at Beckett, w with Beckett, you know, and Fettel was telling him this, will kill him. Well, why are, he, why are we letting him do this then, Mr. Point Man? You know, why not just talk to Beckett? You know, Beckett does want to help. You know, he he's not exactly, you know, on almost... Christmas card list, so what, why not just talk to him instead of possessing him and then telling us essentially nothing we already, you know, we didn't already know. You know, that's actually, a lot of the revelations in this, or the, you know, a lot of what forwarded the plot didn't feel like we were going anywhere, you know. For a long while we're just trying to get to Jin, then we get to her, then she gets taken away, and yeah. Just, it, it didn't feel like anything was accomplished, 
also. You know, and, and with us not even learning anything particularly new about the, you know, what's going on. What was Jin even talking about when she's like, oh, they're like contractions. You know, I get that you're trying to, you need some reason to be saying, oh, she's about to have the baby. What was the, what were the contractions? I didn't see anything strange happening in the game that I could assign that word to, you know, prior to that point. But anyway, so yes, Point Man walks off, you know, carrying the baby and it's like, you know, if they make a fourth one, then, you know, ooh, there's another one and... Yeah, I guess that's Point Man choosing a side. That was actually, you know, early on, I was like, what am I doing? Who am I doing it for? What is, the, you know, I'm sorry, but that's not that good of a way to start a game to have just this, and, and it went on like that. I just, I did not know if I was supposed to be fighting for some interest of Point Man. You know, you just have this vague goal of, oh, we have to find Jin, you know, who... We're not even going to talk to sound treatment yet again. Now, did Fettel die? Because this is exactly, you know, Point Man just shoots him in the face. Cause that's a solution to everything. Hey, it worked so well the last time, you know. It just... Yeah, and he just vanishes. And it's like, I don't know, they... I guess they could bring him back. Although last time his body didn't vanish, but... Yeah, why is that? I also love how the story doesn't even really make sense for... I, I didn't play much of this game as Fettel, but in that first level, there's like a bit where Fettel gives him advice, and he's very distinctly talking to his brother. And when you play it as Fettel, they play that same bit, you know, so is he talking to himself now? You know, and you just have this... I don't know, I guess in co-op, maybe it makes sense, but when you're just playing it single player, you know, it doesn't really make sense that, you know, so they're, they're both there, but you never see the other brother do anything. It's not like they split up and one of, you know, we'll meet back here or something. You know, it's just every time it cuts to a cutscene where we break the first person perspective because, you know... Why bother with that? You know, one of the few interesting gimmicks this series has. And, yeah, suddenly they're just talking as if they've, you know, been next to each other the entire time. You know, when you have other games that have the opportunity of co-op, you actually do have this sort of thing of, you know, this is what the other one is doing or something. You know, you got the Kane and Lynch games the other person is right there, it's just, you know, it's being controlled by an AI, you know. The Avatar game for the Wii, you know, you have the, you know, the, the other person, the other Navi, you know, jumps in and is like, you know, and between levels you actually have, you know, they actually say a lot, I'll scout ahead or I'll, you know, I'll take another path, you know, stuff like that, you know, Prince of Persia of the Forgotten Sands for the Wii, you know, again, it's right there, it's just, you know, either you're controlling what the, I don't remember, the the spirit, whatever, is doing, or another player is, you know, but in this, nope, not even gonna bother, you know. I also think this one really lacked this sort of feeling of, you know, I don't remember that much from the first game. I think the first game you were essentially... You're all alone for a lot of the game. But in the second one, they had this thing of sometimes you are with your teammates. You know, that was interesting, you know, and it it helped sort of make it more diverse, you know. This game and the first game, more boring than the second game because they lack this sort of element of, you know, sure it's good to have sort of isolation and that sort of thing, but sometimes it just gets to be you know, a bit boring in the long run, you know, I, I don't know, it does work in other games, I think, it's maybe that those other games were more story driven, you know, the, the first one was somewhat story, but this one, very little story, you know, it's very action driven, and if that is very repetitive, it's just gonna, 
you're going you're gonna to end up with a boring game. And that's really what happens here, you know. you There's never this sort of, you know, oh, this, you know, my teammates, and now we'll, you know, be fighting through this new area together, you know. There's, yeah. And the final scene. I don't know if this plays regardless of if you're Fettel or Point Man as the favorite son, you know, but the final cutscene after the end credits shows the room again, you know, and again, one of these scenes just feels like it take forever, you know, and it's not, yeah, anyway, basically, well, a bunch of stuff happens. What it ends up with is Fettel now has his psychic powers, and he ends up in the room again. And, you know, it's all shown from just inside the room. And, you know, he's asleep for a while, and then he wakes up. And some soldiers come in to pacify him, and he blows their heads up. And some soldiers come in to pacify him, and he blows their heads up. And it just keeps going. And I'm just thinking, by the time you're a soldier and you're looking into this room, there's 12 bodies, all of them have their heads blown up. You've got your, I think it's stun guns, even your, like, tranquilizer darts. The kid is there. Don't you just say, I'm not getting paid enough to do this. No, just send someone else, you know. I'm sorry, but do these guys just have no sense of self-preservation? That was just ridiculous. And again, extremely repet repetitious, you know. It just kept going and going and going. You know, if you're not going to have something different happen every so often, you know. Besides, we know that he's not going to break out at that point because he was still there by the time he was grown up. And when he, you know, took over the, you know, the psychic army in the first one. So, yeah. That, I think it was a phase commander. I think it was before you saw the phase commanders. In an early level, he's like chewing out his soldiers, like they're talking about, oh, we need, you know, evacuation, we're getting, you know, killed over here, we have to go with this, these people we're, you know, trying to evacuate, and he's like, do, follow your orders or face dismemberment, you know, and, yeah, other lines like that, and just, dude needs to get laid, you know, or maybe it's just his way of, you know, saying that the swear jar is officially full. Or it could be that he's just really peeved at them for constantly announcing every course of action. You know, they yell when they throw a grenade. They, you know, tell you when they're the only soldier left. They say how they're going to approach you. You know, I did like the indicator of, you know, there, there's this like little red icon with an arrow pointing whenever the, or not necessarily red, but... There's an icon showing you when a grenade's been tossed that, you know, tells you there's a grenade right next to you or behind you or whatever, and, you know, yeah. The... The cover mechanism really... You know, it's actually decent enough in that you can walk all the way around some, like, boxes and stuff, but... At the same time, you know, you can't actually use it everywhere to the point where they felt the need to tell you when you can use it, which is just, you know, I walked around looking at doors, you know, trying to open them, and then suddenly you have this icon. I looked out, hopefully, ooh, this is, you know, this is the way I'm supposed to go, but nope, it's just that you can, you know, hug this wall if you wanted to. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I did like near the end with the, you know, whatever that was up in the sky, you know, that was pretty cool and how the sky got increasingly red in those last couple of levels, you know, around maybe the halfway point of the game, it actually started getting interesting, you know, with the red in the sky, and you could just, you could tell, you know, she's about to give birth, and this could very well be Armageddon, 
you know, reminds me of an X. But yeah, that really, really worked. You know, it just, it, that made you feel like this is, this is real. You know, there's some bad stuff's gonna go down if I don't stop it, you know. I thought it was a little, you know, they, they just kill Beckett. You know, the game feels like just killing off characters is necessarily going to be, you know, interesting or, you know, killing people. There's nothing, you know, again, in the other games they realize that sometimes it's more interesting if you just find out something really disturbing about a character's past instead of just constantly seeing death, you know, you find so many dead bodies in this, and when you meet someone, you, you either kill them or they get killed in some way, you know, it's just kind of boring. This also kind of lacks, you know, didn't the, both the first and the second game have some sort of, like, ally that you, you know, like, communicated with over the radio, or that, well, that communicated with you, really, because you never, you know, Point Man is, like, the least communicative you know, lead character in a video game ever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that covers everything. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.